Deep Rock Galactic is left for dead with dwarves in space. Yes, you heard me right. To put another co-op shooter in the same sentence as Valve's Zombie Masterpiece is a bit of a big deal for me, having spent a religious amount of time playing that game with friends. It's practically a weekly tradition by now. But trust me, this co-op title is punching at the same weight and it's only just hit early access. The premise is fairly simple. Four players arrive in a vermintide style hub and embark on daring missions to hostile planets littered with awful bugs and excellent loot. However, what makes Deep Rock Galactic stand out from the rest is its gameplay. Each of the four classes provide a unique experience to the player, and crucially, they bring essential individual skills to the table that you will sorely miss when you fall prey to the game's swarm. The gunner boasts a minigun and satchel charges, ready to unload quick and nasty damage on the bugs found in Deep Rock's caves. His trump card is the zip wire, a support tool that allows you and your team to traverse gaps and get to great loot. This could be the difference between life or death in the game's procedurally generated caves, which offer new challenges upon each visit. Now the Driller is more of an up close and personal character, offering a flamethrower perfect for taking down the large arachnids, yet his hand mounted power drills are where this class truly shines. Each cave system in Deep Rock is 100% destructible, and due to their randomised design, being able to chew through walls is key to survival. Oh yeah, and did I mention that this game is tough? In my first few games I was struck by the struggle, but it never felt too agonising. The game's DIY design gives you a willingness to learn and get better to come back and acquire more. This natural progression system leads to functional weapon and armour upgrades, as well as really silly vanity options if you fancy a shiny new hat, and as we all know, people do love hats. Remember the barnacles from Half-Life 2? Yeah, well Deep Rock decided they would re-up the concept. Your driller could be happily mining some Morkite, only to be whisked away into the sky by a cave leech and chomped into a pulp. Other enemy variants include arachnids that explode on contact, and overwhelming little critters that felt like the flood from Halo. To reinforce the Valve parallels, we also have an engineer class with complementary sentry turrets and a portable platform launcher, providing some much needed structure in the dark, ever-changing cave networks. Speaking of darkness, Deep Rock Galactic plays with lighting in a really fun way. Each player is equipped with three flares as they start the journey that rejuvenate after use. The game is really dark, I mean you are in caves, so you must carefully choose when you need light, as it could be the difference between finding that last resource spot or spotting the barnacle nest before it completely wipes out your entire team. And trust me, that happens a lot. The lighting system reminded me a lot of Minecraft back in the early days. There was brisk alpha evenings when they just added tools and you had to light up your hastily drawn mountainside cavern before the zombies got in. Deep Rock ups the ante by trapping you in a cave that you don't understand full of evil with no way to escape or wait out the night. The scout class can help here with his dedicated flare gun. He can fire this steadily into rocks to engross the gloomiest caverns in radiant light. And despite being admittedly the weakest class, he does sport a handy zip wire which means that he can tag up to those hard to reach mineral reserves. Also tagging along with the crew is your handy robot mule, who is quite possibly your best friend, though when I first encountered him, you could say otherwise. Oh, right, who the right. fuck's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, it's a... Uh, oh, I think I saw a friend. He's I a friend. This sweet little guy follows you everywhere for better and for worse, but your robot buddy and his excellent boops are core to the gameplay loop. You see, in caves with such rich resources like the ones found in Deep Rock, your pockets will never be empty. Inventory space is finite, so you must consistently be depositing your minerals in Mule. This completes the objectives and pleases your really angry boss, allowing your crew to call the escape pod, which leads me on to perhaps the most exciting part of this game. Naturally, once you've completed your objectives, you're going to want to go home, and that means a mad dash back to where you started for the escape pod, with intermittent swarms halting your progress. You only have 5 minutes to do this, making it a bit of a crazy run. Friends can easily get left behind, and you may have to say goodbye to that cumbersome salt gem for the sake of your own life. Making those tough decisions is part of what makes Deep Rock's gameplay so compelling. It's kind of like escaping a house fire and figuring out what you need to save. This plays a lot like a Left 4 Dead finale or a payday escape when you're running with the final loot bags. It provides a similar kind of adrenaline rush and makes you consider the tactics behind each mission. Did you provide an easy route out with your platforms and wires? Ammo is finite, so have you wasted all your bullets and made it impossible to make it out alive? What if you've run out of light and you've forgotten where you're going? The game will quite happily leave you lost and alone in its procedural caves, putting the responsibility in your hands if you want to make it out there with your loot intact. It's also going to reward you for making it out with your buddies, and it encourages you to not put a healthy dog down when they shit the bed right before the crescendo. 
During the review period, most of the time I was playing with press people that I didn't really know, but because of how essential each of the classes are, with their respective skills, teamwork and communication were clearly key to success. It threaded a really lovely line, where each member of the team was so essential to the mission that their versatility and input was appreciated, and it gave the sense of team effort that you don't really get in other co-op games, especially when you're playing solo. Developers Ghost Ship Games plan to add many more game modes, cosmetics, and a convincing metagame when the game reaches full release. But for now, you can join the early access journey on Steam. But just beware of that fall damage, because it totally sucks. Thank you so much for watching this first video of its kind on Quillstreak. I'm Jordan, and I'm the co-founder of the site. We post great varied content on the daily, and we'd love it if you checked us out. Links to Quillstreak and all of our socials will be in the description box, but if you want to see more of the same, be sure to like and subscribe. Comments and feedback, as always, are heavily appreciated. See ya!